the planet is warming. You know, the rise uh, of the oceans level. itself becoming warmer. The oceans are getting more acidic. acidic. The polar ice caps catastrophic melting. moment, moment, in, moment time. in time. For the last 200 years, we've been terribly polluting our environment and changing the atmosphere, which is having global consequences. Our society runs on fossil fuel-based sources of energy that took millions of years to form. But the problem is that we're using them up in less than 200 years. If we don't break that cycle, it could lead to this catastrophic moment in time. So how can we respond collectively to slow down or reverse climate change? Sustainability education is key because it's our future. The only way we are going to change the planet, and we have to, it's critical, is to teach the next generation. Many, many of these problems that we have could be solved by just doing the right thing with technology that's available. The whole world needs to be thinking about this. To start, we need to come up with more sources of carbon neutral energy, and we can look to nature for some solutions. Kelp starts off no bigger than a large bacterium. And they go from that to become these giant structures that are often referred to as the sequoias of the sea. Biofuel is fuel made from natural living things. There's a lot of interest in kelp as a source of biofuel. It's something that we can grow without a lot of natural resources. We don't need fresh water, we don't need land, we don't need fertilizer. And on top of that, it's one of the fastest growing organisms on the planet. Under ideal conditions, it can grow up to one to two feet per day. The challenge is finding a way of growing enough kelp in the open ocean that can be converted into fuel. To make it into fuel, we need to grow enough of it to turn it into a crude oil, which would then be refined and pumped directly into our cars. The idea that marine bioenergy had, which led to this project, is a depth cycling system. The kelp would be grown at the surface during the day where there's plenty of sunlight for it to photosynthesize, and then at night, the kelp would be moved to deeper waters to be fertilized where the water is rich with nutrients. This way, it can grow very quickly. Autonomous drones would continuously pull these large kelp farm arrays. The drones will take it up and down the water column, traveling constantly throughout the world's oceans. You might imagine that once the kelp get to a certain size, the kelp farms dock onto harvest ships. The Wrigley Institute for many years has been the center of activity in marine biology at USC. Catalina is an amazing place for marine environmental science because it's an island. It's a perfect place with the way that currents go here. We have particularly clean seawater out here, so it's a perfect place to do research. There's just something so special about Catalina. At Wrigley, we are working to make this kelp biofuel farm a reality. To find out if this would even work in the first place, that's where the kelp elevator comes in. That's the test bed. But no one has ever tried it before. We're building a small pilot scale model of something that could cycle the kelp up and down so that they can get all the resources that they need to grow optimally all year round. The kelp are fluctuating between about 8 meters and 80 meters. And we have very skilled, experienced divers at our facility who go out to the elevator and our control sites to track changes in biomass almost on a weekly basis. The depth cycling strategy is working. It really takes a village to execute something like this successfully. Someday soon, we may be using kelp biofuel instead of fossil fuels. None of the sustainability stuff is rocket science. We've already invented these things. So we keep working on them to make them work better. But in the meantime, we can take what we know and apply it to problem solving. 
but it's really quite simple, but it just means changing habits. So it's about psychology and changing the way we live. And this goes from the individual to the community to the country. When we reach that stage that we can cross that bridge of dealing with the will of the people, then we will have done something. I can't imagine doing anything else. It's just, that's where my heart is. And to be able to have your passion be your job is an incredibly lucky thing.